Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Bazzori here, 3rd of August, 2022, with a quick midweek market snapshot for you. We'll just focus on the S&P 500 again. I'll start with the 60-minute chart, take you through the monthly chart. I want to talk a little bit about this morning's action, pretty good rally, at least on the surface. And I want to talk about what's under the surface, at least in this morning's session, and consider that against the overall general backdrop, if you will, or general conditions. So on the 60 minute chart, you know, we have this rising wedge, tried to break out of that below. And the fact that we can draw almost a straight line, meaning we're, you know, kind of hitting this three times here on the hourly, but we have these momentum indicators pointing lower, that would be not a real bullish short-term sign, at least at the moment, with regard to the 60-minute chart. On the daily chart, things still remain, I want to say, relatively constructive, right? I could, you know, if we could do this, which is a pretty good, uh, pretty good uptrend line here, we could take this one and, you know, so you kind of have that, that channel going on the daily um, or, you know, playing technical analyst here, an ascending triangle pattern as well. Notice in here, folks, you have this area where the market consolidated for, you know, eight or 10 days and then just kind of fell off a cliff and gap lower. Remember when we, when these gaps were created, I virtually promise you they get filled. They did ran up against some resistance right here that happened to coincide with 4,000. Not as strong a resistance as I thought. You may recall that uh, based on how the options positioning was, was lining up, if we did get a break above that, you could see a thrust. And then 4,100 would be some pretty good resistance right now, uh, according to our partners in the options space. On balance, in terms of dealer positioning, uh, it's fairly bullish right here. They kind of recognize this range between 4,100 and 4,200. 4,200 now being an area of stiff resistance based on positioning, 4,100 being support. They acknowledge that you break down below support. There could be a shift in, in the way these dealers hedge. They could precipitate something worse to the downside. And it works in both directions as well. So uh, more call buying, which on balance is what we've seen the last couple of days would demand more hedging on the part of the dealers, which actually means buying the underlying. And if it were to ramp higher, there'd be more of that going on. Um, so right now it's, uh, it's not quite as bullish this morning, looking at the positioning as it's been evolving on the very short term, but still net bullish with some real downside risk if things were to break. One thing I think worth pointing out is where the RSI, the relative strength index sits pretty close to, to overbought levels. I think I mentioned this in the last video. Last time it was where it is now was right here, and you can see what happened. Uh, time before that was right here, and you can see we had a bit of a correction right there. Got kind of close in here, setting off this correction. But this time we did have an, a, a serious bearish divergence to go with it. Um, back in here, you know, I would argue that you didn't. You actually had a bullish divergence, but nevertheless, the market still sold off markedly. And then recall right here is where we got really bullish on a short-term basis. We're able to play that without the money call options for clients. And then, um, but really haven't been there in the same way during this kind of meandering higher. Uh, as you know, our base case is that the market probably should go lower before this is all said and done. It is interesting to me that we're seeing this much strength in here. Now, I would argue this morning that to no small degree, it has to do with happy news around what has not happened with regard to Speaker Pelosi's trip. There was a lot of saber rattling, a lot of um, you know rhetoric around Chinese military actions and what they would do. And it was, it was definitely so far very soft uh, relative to what was expected. I think the market was somewhat nervous about that today. You know, there's there's a kind of a big sigh of relief. Defense stocks are down a bunch uh, in response. What would really be a concern, one would think, would be the rhetoric that's coming from the Fed speakers this week. For the most part, even the ones who typically are very, quote, dovish, they're kind of saying that the market's got this one wrong. 
that if the market thinks that we're going to start backing off anytime soon, they've got another thing coming, so to speak. Now, I think what's happening, though, is we're seeing somewhat softer economic data which has maybe the bulls thinking, yeah, they're saying that, but they're going to be surprised by the softer data and the big come down from inflation. We're seeing more and more of that show up in various places. The ISM manufacturing survey came out Monday and the, the, the price index or the, the index that really captures inflation dropped markedly from the month before. It still shows inflation rising, but not nearly to the degree that it was the prior month. With regard to this morning's market, uh, one thing I want to point out is the breadth isn't all that great for just looked at it a few minutes ago. And even though the S&P was up close to 1% at the time, and it's, uh, let's see, and it's up over 1% right now. Uh, despite that, looking across sectors, utilities are down. I mentioned defense sectors down. Materials are down two thirds of 1%. Uh, uh, miners are down. Energy is down over 2% this morning, energy stocks uh, and so on. So we're, we don't have tremendous breadth. Like I said, a few minutes ago, 40% of the S&P 500 was trading lower. Um, so it's a very tech driven, you know, NASDAQ driven rally. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 index is up 2%. Stocks that are traded in the NASDAQ are the longest duration stocks. So they tend to react positively to the prospects for lower interest rates. So again, I think what's playing out here is, is positioning influencing the day-to-day -day action. But I do think there's some bullish undertones, at least in terms of sentiment in the short run, about what we're going to see maybe Friday in the jobs report and that the Fed may you know, start softening up going forward. Right now, it looks like 50 basis points will be the September hike. Looking out right now, that's what the Fed members are suggesting. That's what Fed funds futures are discounting. But they are saying, in terms of the members, that you know, 75 basis points is easily doable if inflation doesn't continue to, to come off the boil. So long story short, uh, it's hard to get crazy bullish right here when you have a Federal Reserve, which really has been the biggest support for the market throughout the entire last bull market that I think people are still trading it, but I think the regimes are different going forward, but it's human nature, right? We're continuing to trade yesterday's market, but um, if we're right, we're going to make money in different places during the next bull market. And in the meantime, a lot of that sentiment needs to work its way through the market. It makes great sense typically to get these big rallies. As I mentioned the other day, we have yet to actually come back and test the 200 day moving average, which is virtually a foregone conclusion. If you look at past bear markets, meaning once it becomes an official bear market, you tend to come up and bump up against that 200 day moving average more than once before the ball game's over. And often you bump on that before you come back and ultimately plumb lower lows. We're open to all possibilities. But right now, as we look at the charts and we look at the fundamentals, we are not nearly at the point yet where we can sound the all clear and get aggressive and start rotating to more growthy sectors and all the things that we'd love to do. Um, as you know, we have a lower low staked out on the weekly charts. Um, again, that 3,500 level coincides with the 200 week moving average. And I showed you our 30, 30 year analysis of these patterns and where they tend to bottom, typically outside of recession, but I'll say in a mild recessionary environment. Right now, this bear market rally is, is giving us a buy signal on the weekly chart, not remotely overbought here yet on the weekly chart. Um, and coming up here to take a serious stab, maybe at the, um, at the 50 week moving average. Recall originally when we were calling for that bear market rally, I had an upside target of 4,300. That still remains for us right now, technically speaking. So, uh, we're pushing up against that. So we'll see what happens between here and there, or if we even get there on the monthly chart. The recent strength is beginning to show up here in the MACD histogram. You know, still a wide gap, still a very strong sell signal. And the primary trend has, uh, has yet to be tested. Outside of a recession, or I'll say today, in a mild recessionary environment, 
the bottom could very well be right here around that 50 month moving average, which is now up to 3510. So what does that mean, clients? That means that the cash that we've, you know, that we've kind of been sitting on looking for the opportunity with some of that would be deployed at 3500, all things as they look today. Of course, if things develop on the way down that make us less sanguine at this level, we wouldn't do as much with new cash or with rotations. And uh, I doubt very seriously if we're just going to go unhedged at that juncture if we get there anytime soon. From a timeline perspective, we're still kind of eyeballing the fall, you know, September, October, November timeframe uh, based on technical trends. So what we're, what we're suggesting right now is that probabilities point to something lower along the lines of 3,500 on the S&P, which is probably a good 15% now below where we are now. And that would, that would occur sometime later this year. But again, these are just the probabilities based on what we're seeing. Uh, we're not wedded to any of it, folks. It's a dynamic day-to-day -day process that we go through. And right now, what I just presented to you makes good probabilistic sense to us for the moment. I'll leave it there. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.